Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today, I have something pretty cool to show you. We're going to be working on building this, which is our little planetarium here for my uh, art entry here. I've been working pretty hard. You can see we got the stone going in, looking quite nice. The lighting, of course, needs to be rebuilt, as always. Uh, and I got these things painted, and they are looking quite good. Uh, but I wanted to work on this, and we got a couple of things going on here. We have this effect here, which is actually pretty simple. But uh, the big thing here is the solar system here in the middle. And I've got all these guys crisscrossing and moving around. We've got some of them have little moons and all that. So I wanted to show you how I did this. Again, it's pretty easy, but just uh, putting all the effects together is really the magic. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'll drop out of the presentation mode here. And we're going to look at this one thing at a time. So this center sphere here, which is the, um, the housing for the hologram effect itself, this thing is actually a sphere that has been just created in Maya, brought in here into Unreal, and it had its um, normal map, uh, normals flipped. So that way we're actually looking into the sphere at all times. This really helps with the lighting in the scene. I think everything kind of looks a little bit better with that. And so I'll show you the material for that. It's actually quite simple. So up here, here is the material. So what I've got going on here is we have color of your choice, and that is multiplied by a linear gradient. So just pump that up into there. Then I have this texture here, and this texture is a, uh, a hex grid. And this was just created inside of Substance Designer and then just exported. I just needed just this hex grid, that's all I needed. This text coordinate here is in order to change the scaling resolution of that. And I did want six and four is what I ended up here for the UNV tiling and that's in order to make these look a little bit more round I know they're hexagons but you know what I mean a little more uniform uh, in the middle here I like that a lot better so then we're going to add that to the multiplication of this then uh, over here what I'm doing is multiplying this in order to get my emissive color and this is multiplying by three so that comes down here into the emissive now for the opacity it's actually a multiplication of our linear gradient at a point 1, 2, 5. So I want it to be very transparent. See, so it almost disappears as you get to the top. Then to create this sort of like uh, effect here where it's radiating energy, this is a panner, and the panner is at 0.5 on the Y, so we're going up. And I brought in another texture. I created this in Photoshop. This is pretty simple. It's just a gradient tool, and I put black in the very center and white at the two ends. So that generates this sort of uh, band going upward, you know, a little energy, that kind of thing. Okay, so then this guy gets in a blend overlay of our final texture of combining the color with the grid here. And we just overlay that on top right before we put it into the base color. And this is the end result. It's pretty quick and easy, and uh, I like the way it looks. So that's one thing down. Very cool. So now how do we get our little solar system going on here? So this is pretty easy. It's just a lot of small things put together. And uh, once you see it, it's, oh, we also have the sun. We gotta talk about the sun. The sun in the middle here is pretty cool. He actually has a, a wavering surface. And so that looks pretty cool. Let's do the sun next, and we'll come back to the planets. So the sun is just a sphere in the scene, and really it's the material that makes him special. So let's take a look at his material. So again, up here in the corner, we start with a color. We're gonna use this blend linear dodge and I'm gonna blend that with all of this that we're about to make, but so that gets blended and then just added over here. And notice that we're using the emissive color to generate the glow it is just a multiplication coming off of that. You can really pump this up. I've lowered it for this uh, demonstration so you can see the effect. Now, in order to generate uh, this, uh, the moving surface, what we've got going on here is a texture cord. Again, this is to scale, so we're doing five by five. And then these panners are really the magic here. So a 0.125 on both. And this one is a negative 0.125 on both. And these textures are actually the Clouds 2 node from Substance Designer with a different seed value for each one, a different uh, disorder, I believe, is the, the term for the, uh, the slider. As you can see there, um, I'm pointing over here at the screen. You can't see my hand. So uh, these two here on different seed values at different, at completely inversed uh, panners here, and those are blended together with a hard light. And I'll show you what that looks like. If we start previewing the node, come on. 
it should show it to us right here. Hopefully it will. No, I'm seeing it, but it's not showing up on the recording yet. There we go, okay, excellent. So this is kind of what we get, just that general movement. I wanted to, to uh, create that feeling of how our actual sun, how most stars, there's a lot going on in the surface and all under the surface, and you know it's kind of almost bubbling with these gases. So that's what I wanted to create here. All right, so we'll stop previewing that. Now down here we have another panner, very slow panner, just around the equator here, 0 0.025. And this is another clouds, and this is actually a clouds two. The first ones I think were a clouds one uh, from designer, so this is a clouds two with some changes to its disorder. Okay, so after we hard light blend these two together, I'm going to hard light blend the result of that with the bottom one. Okay, you see how that's going? And that's what comes up here to give us our final sort of bumpy surface, you know. Now this is a multiply add of these two to get a different layout. And that I'm throwing into the normal. I don't really know if it does much in this sense because it's a star, but I wanted to make sure that it does have some bumpiness just in case. And then here's a multiply, just taking this direct value and saying, let's throw that into both the pixel depth offset and the world position offset. And that will help us to get a little bit of a height map in there, even though you won't really see it in this scenario. But then we also get this offset, and that's what allows this surface to actually get deformed. And then when we go back to the scene here, if I get close to it, you can see there the surface is actually being wavering. And up up really, really close like this, it might tend to start to look kind of stupid. You know, you can see here it's kind of getting crazy. But this effect from, you know, this distance, you'll just get that sense, that feeling that the surface is shimmering. And that's what we really wanted. So that is awesome. Okay. So let's move on to our planets. So our planets are a pretty simple blueprint here. And what I've done is inside of Maya, I've created a ring model. And by ring, I mean literally just a polygonal ring. And I've brought that into, um, into Unreal here. And then this, uh, the actual planet itself, or the celestial body, is just a sphere with a uh, texture on it. Just a, just a real temporary texture. Just you know, replace this with your own planetary texture. Uh, but the, the magic here really is the texture, not really the, the actual model, the ring. So I just wanted to show you this ring, that's all it is, is a polygonal ring. Now if I fire up Photoshop here, you'll see, here's where the magic comes into play. So creating this, we need a hard line where we have white, and then it becomes gray and becomes black. And this is both the texture and the mask for this effect. So if I go down here in my list, this is just a white, I did a white fill, and then all the magic is in here in the effects. In the gradient overlay, if you set this style to angle and you don't touch anything else, just leave this at 90, look at what you get. Now, imagine if you were to cut out a ring in the middle here, huh, all of a sudden that gives us exactly what we want. So I have that here, and then I just made some duplicates and kept scaling him down and down so I can use different ranges inside of Unreal, okay? All right, so we're back in Unreal, and here what we have is we have our blueprint set up here, and it's quite simple. So the ring is centered, as you can see, and then what I've done is created just, I call this body. It's a static mesh using a sphere, and I moved the actual body of the, of the celestial body over to the side here so that it lines up with the beginning head of this trail. And you can see based upon the texture, I wanted the trail to cut off about a quarter of the way through. You can change this if you wanted to make it longer. Uh, that's all in the uh, gradient settings inside of Photoshop. But I kind of like that. I think that that's a good setup. We'll just let that trail off. And you can see there that fade off is a real nice. Okay, so once that's done, we do need to do a little bit of uh, uh, scripting here with the blueprints. Not a big deal. We've done this before. So from our event tick, we're gonna go over and add an add actor local rotation. Then I'm gonna create a variable here, and I'm gonna create this, call it rotation speed. Now remember, when you create a variable, set this setting here, and then immediately compile, and that will allow this default value to appear, and then you can put in your default value. So from there, I'm gonna bring over into the yaw, which is the, you know, around about your waist, like, a, like an equator. So there you go, that's the yaw. And then here, this is a, uh, a scaler to scale a vector. Uh, I'm sorry, to scale a float 
into a rotator and then it's kind of multiplying the two together here see scaled a and b rotator and we're going to put that into our delta rotation of course our target is our self so then when we go back here and we look um, these guys that are on the outer edge this guy here let's just focus on him the outer edge guy he is exactly that that's all he's doing is he'll just go in a circle around the origin which is about where the sun is here and there you go but now I've got some others here that are different speeds. See, this guy's pretty speedy. I'll show you how we do that. And then this guy actually has a moon. You see his moon working his way around. This moon should actually be a little bit closer to him. And we can scale that down quite a bit. But I'll show you how that works too. And then really, uh, we just make a bunch of these. And I've turned the uh, rotations. So you see this guy's kind of up and down and around. Very cool. This only works for circular orbits at the moment. I'm really trying to figure out how to do an, an ovular hope that's the right term, uh, an oval shaped orbit because I think that would be a lot cooler and a lot more uh, realistic to the way things work. So let's go ahead and look at how we can change the speed and we're going to look at um, the uh, moons, okay? All right, so for the moons, we'll change the speed if we just select them. Uh, inside of the blueprint, when you're working in here, right here, this little guy variable is public. There you go. So if I, he starts off like this. If you click this to make the eye open and compile, that will allow it when you have it selected here in the scene, that will allow here the rotation speed to show up. Then we can change his value. We can make it something crazy and he'll go really crazy or make it really, really subtle. I wanted to make things that were closer to the sun, move faster and things that are further away, go slower. You know, it just kind of made sense to me. So uh, to make the moons is the next thing we're going to do. Yes. So the moons, let's go over to Celestial B. And Celestial B is pretty clever. So this is a copy of A, as you can see. Center, we have our, our body here and our trail. And then if you look up here, I've actually brought A into B and made it a child of body. So really we're using the same thing, again, but smaller, and I'm just around our, our original planet here, and it becomes a moon. So then here all we have to do is go into here and change the uh, material and you can have a different moon there and this moon will go around and he's got the exact same setup as far as all of this. We don't have to do this more than once and he will go around his parent while this goes around its parent and it's all just everybody goes around their parents and there you go. We put them all together inside of here and I'm going to add a bit more to this still some um, you know some notations and such for this display so when they come up and look at the solar system here it'll tell them things like how far they are from certain planets and have a bit more um, some of these readouts and such in here but for now let's take a look at our uh, our setup here so if I go play let's go to our full screen take a look and here is our solar system just everybody's rotating correctly everybody's doing their thing and it's nice and just you know kind of elegant so we can add a whole lot more to this, but this is the basics. So we have a nice m movement to our scene. And even in a static image, it'll look really cool. You'll have these uh, you know, celestial bodies rotating. It just, it just looks really awesome. So I, uh, I kind of prototyped this at lunch uh, last week, and I wanted to show it to you guys today. I've been working hard on painting the rest of the scene. As you can see, we've got some pieces coming in here. i got some other pieces that are about to just drop into place, and it's all coming along really nicely. I've been working hard pushing on this. Uh, I think next week I'm going to share with you guys, as you can see here, I started to use my technique for the, the bricks. These are of course still work in progress. But I wanted to show you how I did these bricks too because these are a curved surface. And even on the inside here, uh, you can't quite see it through the hologram we have here, but there are curved bricks in here. This is a concave shape. And that concave is very difficult to deal with with uh, bricks. And so I found a way to do that and I wanted to share that with you probably next week. Uh, it does require some modeling, but then we can actually model and get a mask out of that. And it turned out really beautifully, and I'm really happy with how this is all coming together. So, all right, that's enough for me for today. Uh, I'll let you get back to it. I hope you enjoyed it very much. If you guys have any questions, if you have a way to do like an oval-shaped uh, 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 orbit here, please let me know. I'm really interested in that, making this as best as it possibly can be. And uh, as always, keep practicing, get better. And I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.